Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to touch on the top 5 tips for Blood Bowl 3 in the pre-season. Let's go. So, many of you have got Blood Bowl 3 and we're getting into playing it. Let's get into my top 5 tips that I think you should learn pretty quickly for how you can play Blood Bowl 3 and what's good to play around with. So let's go into the game and start playing with it in a bit more detail. So here we are in a normal game. Uh, I've just set it up as a hot seat game so I can play it through. I'll just do a quick kickoff to get that out of the way. A uh, bit of chaos here. Love the blood trail uh, with there and a pitch invasion and uh, that's bad for somebody. So instantly, uh, someone somewhere, there we go, uh, the Dark Elf lineman is down. But let's get into uh, tip number five. Uh, my first tip that I think you should know about what to do with Blood Bowl. So my first tip is a really simple one. I think you should get used to the settings pretty quickly. And there's two sets of, of settings that you should get into. My first one is that I would really look at the options and the sound and the detail that you've got for this. I love the music and the detail within Blood Bowl 3. But the music is really loud and the interface sounds really loud. So what I've done is I've knocked the interface sound, sounds down a bit and the music sounds down a bit. I find that really useful. I think there's then something that's really useful to learn and it's these numbers, these letters down in the bottom left hand corner that you need to really get used to and that is, uh, sorry, the left hand corner over here uh, and that's firstly, the, the let's start with L, L is the log, you need to get used to looking at this so you can actually see what happens, so we can see here we went through the ball bounce, the kickoff event was a 12. Uh, then into the fan factors and the stun of the results there. That's really useful. I would re fully recommend as well that you turn on tackle zones and have it so that you can actually see what's going on. So if we look at uh, where the ball is here and the detail, uh, for some reason the tackle zones aren't coming on. That's interesting. Um, the grid is quite useful, which is G. Um, uh, the player skills, I find these really useful because at the moment I don't know the models in detail in Blood Bowl 3, so I'm just getting to learn them. So you can get to look at them and go, for some reason the runner's lined up on the line of scrimmage, runner's got dump off, um, that's quite handy. So you can put them on for both sides. Um, you've then also got uh, the next one, which is the innate skills, which you can turn them on or off. Um, match modifiers, quite useful, we want to see the weather, have a look at it in some detail. Um, then the camera behaviour, the camera tilt and the coach reactions, which I know a lot of you will have got into. And let's have a look at some of those and the head banging and go through those. So that's my top five tip for Blood Bowl 3. Just get into the settings, learn a little bit about it and so we will go. we'll end the turn and go on to, turn, to tip number four. So if you like this video, please do click on like and subscribe and we'll uh, do some more tips for Blood Bowl 3 as we go through it. So tip number four is really starting to get into one of the other important aspects of it. Now for me, I've really looked forward to playing Blood Bowl 3 on the Steam Deck. So the first question is, can you download it on the Steam Deck and will it play? Absolutely, yes you can. Same pretty much the same size download. You can download it onto the Steam Deck and play it, but there's one big thing that you need to know. Currently, I've not seen a single cinematic on the Steam Deck. You're going to be pressing B to hold and skip the cinematics all the time. It's currently not optimised for the Steam Deck and expect some issues as you're playing it through. But that's okay, get used to it, start playing with it a bit more and let's see how it goes. So that was the fourth tip, now let's get it.
So tip number three is something that we will all see as we're playing Blood Bowl. This end of turn timer, it just ticks away and ticks away and ticks away really quickly. Basically every match is set up for two minute turns. Now for some players, and I know that I'm talking to a certain particular player at my local club, two minutes is absolutely plenty of time, you would probably play in a minute and a half. Most people are used to about three minutes or four minutes to a turn and some people are real thinkers and will take more time. What you'll see here, and we've got an example of it, as that clock starts to run down and tick down, it starts to flash in red, then you get the edge of the screen, starts to flash in red, and that anxiety level starts to go up. There's an important thing to remember here. You've got an overtime clock up here. So the um, extra time up here, see it's now counting down. It's seven and a half minutes for the game. And actually, if you play reasonably quickly and get on with things, you'll use some of this time, but don't worry about it too much. Don't rush the game, but do play it reasonably quickly. The other thing to remember is that playing seven minutes um, and a half minutes on extra on top of that, as well as uh, playing with another player. If you're playing online and you've got to wait for four minutes for the other person to play, you're gonna really want them to get on with it. So in, this, in, the, in those cases, it's really worth absolutely getting on with it. So let's go into our second top tip for Blood Bowl. Now for me, this is a really simple one. You can see as we do things, you can use the right click to go backwards and you're clicking for where you can go. One of the things that I found that's really useful is making sure that you don't accidentally misclick. And an easy way to do that is to use the advance button. And here you can see it's space on the PC, it's X on the Steam Deck, and I would imagine it's X on a number of the consoles in detail. I think that's the Xbox layout. So if we click on this player, uh, and see I've already clicked um, escape a couple of times. Right click is a really good way of going back. So we click on this player, we can see his tackle zones and details. Now you can click or double click to make a block. I'm liking getting into the pressing the advance button. And the reason for not doing the double clicks is you don't accidentally click something that comes up on the wheel when you do it. So let's do a single dice block. Let's see how it goes. We got away with it, it's a push. Over we go, and then we'll follow up. So that's my second tip for Blood Bowl 3. Now my last tip for Blood Bowl 3 is about having some patience for the game. For those of you who started playing it, you'll see it's already had a patch and we're 48 hours nearly into the game ring, ring released. There's a roadmap being set out and there's plenty of work to still to go on with the game. So the, is the game perfect? No. Are all the rules working? No. Will you find a crash? Probably pretty much. Are the servers getting hit as everybody logs into it? Absolutely. So have a bit of patience. That is what the pre-season is about. Having a bit of patience, getting used to the playing, learning how to play it and get on with it. Actually, it's a very good method to learn how to play Bud Bowl anyway. Having a bit of patience, doing the right thing and playing that through. So those are my top tips for Blood Bowl 3. What else would you say have you learned, learned so far in the season? We're going to keep doing these for every season as we go through. But in the pre-season, I think it's very much about let's learn how to play Blood Bowl. Let's learn how to use Blood Bowl 3 and let's go through some of the details around it and get into it. We'll go through some of the teams and the details uh, towards uh, the end of the season and start looking at how the battle pass works when we find out more. So I hope you've enjoyed your first look at Blood Bowl 3, the pre-season tips. And if you agree with them, please enjoy them and let me know. If you don't and you've got others that you would like to suggest, stick them in the comments below. Let's share for the community. Let's keep having fun, happy gaming, happy smiling. See you soon.